Audio Jungle. My channel my name is Tammy Doe and today's topic is gonna to be about why why did I leave my job um, after eight years being a financial advising why did I leave my new business that I just started up why am I so into crystals right now let's start with crystals. what I've learned so far that helped me piece together quite a few well, things start with the dr. Emoto's rice water experiment showing that our thoughts prayers, and intentions actually affect our physical world. If you haven't seen the video, I refer it back to in all my videos. Um, it's about using rice and water and setting your different intentions, um, saying I love you, I hate you, and one being ignored. And when they, after 30 days, when they checked it under the microscope, the water crystals in these jars are different environment's the same the only variable is the thoughts the feeling into that water and the water and the rice so with that I concluded that hey our thoughts and prayers and intentions actually carry the own frequency if your thoughts and feelings and you know all our lives we, <laughs> we've been taught that our feelings don't really matter like suppress your feelings don't be able to see so here's what you have to understand you have to release those emotions or else they're gonna be blocking up your chakras right and then the second thing I tried was hey let me go do a 30-day vegan challenge so I can have like more clarity because the last time I did a juice cleanse for two weeks like I was I had like deep dreams and I just felt great so I went on a 30-day vegan challenge um, cleaning my body and like eating a ton of greens why it's important to eat just plants is because plants go through a process called photosynthesis which converts the light energy captured from the sun into chemical energy that can be used to fuel the organism's activities. So usually photosynthesis is critical in aerobic life on earth, such as humans and animals. So that's why when we're eating meat, we're getting secondhand energy from the sun. Why it's important to incorporate plants in your diet because plants carry the same frequency as the sun, which is at 432 Hertz which is the universal frequency of the earth. Not only that, but when we're eating the meat that we're raised inhumanely, we're absorbing those stress hormones that these animals have been absorbed in their meat. A good alternative to, for those who don't want to absorb the negative energies of the meat, you could actually go to seafood, right? Because seafood, the, the meat is more relaxed. Most of these animals are been in like in the sea and they have room to move so their meat is not as tense as those as of like the, the, the animals that were raised in the farms and the manufacturers and so after this vegan challenge I was feeling great and then I, I started having so many ideas which then led me to crystals crystals can hold energy not only that they can hold energy we can actually direct the energy in the crystals and by directing the energy it has to be in a pointed crystal. When you're working with energies with the crystals, if you hold it on your less dominant hand, your uh, more relaxed hand, that's where you're receiving the energy. But when you're holding it on your dominant hand, which is my right hand here, that means you're directing the energy, right? Because your less dominant hand is more relaxed. So when energy comes in, it can flow easier. And when it comes out here, you can direct it with this point. And if the shape of the crystal is round, it means the absorbed energies exude everywhere. So that's how the energy of the crystals work. And the last thing that's pretty important to know about crystals is how to release the negative energies that's been stored within the crystals um, or that's been absorbed by the crystals uh, through like transferring energy or the energy of someone else is being absorbed by the crystal, right? So you have to learn how to clean the crystals, cleanse it with sound like this. Um, usually when you go to like the crystal store, they'll hit it like this around the crystals and it'll like balance out the sound to let out any blocks in there. Or you can clean it with sage, um, sage smoke. 
and say smudging so to release their negative energies of the crystals. Here are a couple popular ways that people cleanse their crystal. Uh, one, you can do it through sound, chanting, Tibetan bowls, gongs, chimes, binaural beats, even the tones of music. Chanting the sound, we actually cleanse our chakra with sound as well. So that's why you hear monks saying, um, or certain chants can help clean out the chakras or balance and vibrate out the unwanted blocks using just sounds and chanting. Another way to clean the crystals is uh, through sage. It's probably the most popular one, palo santo and certain different herbs. Uh, and the last one is like water. You can put water in rosemary or sea salt and that can help cleanse the crystal. And, but the best way is to really put it out in the sun or the uh, moonlight, depending on the properties of each crystal. Another way to work with these crystals is by charging them. And in order to charge them, we can create like crystal grids where it generates the either the energy from our body or the energy from underneath the ground, the electric and magnetic field to charge these crystals. Started with learning that our mind can actually control things, like actually affects everything around us, affects the physical world. So that's what I learned in Dr. Emoto's rice water experiment with the water crystals. The second thing I got from this vegan challenge is my whole body is cleansed. Like I feel so much more clear, clarity, like that vegan, I mean, this crystal thing came after the, the, the vegan challenge. And something just always like, try the crystals. And when I got to the crystals, learning about energy and the chakra system, that is when everything started making sense. So we know that thoughts and intentions actually affect the physical world. They carry their own frequency, right? And whenever we're focused on a certain thought, we're sending the energy that way. Now, same thing with prayers and meditation. Whenever you're praying is when you're asking for help. And that's why you put your hands together and then you pray, you put your third eye towards your hand. Or when you're doing meditation. Meditation, when you meditate with crystals, you're hearing the guidance from your higher self, your intuition, whatever you want to call it. And then the third thing is when we use the crystals, we can, if it's pointed or depending on the shape, you can direct those energy. We know that our main source of energy is through plants because they go through a process called photosynthesis. Now, where else can we get our energy? Well, there's two ways from above, such as the sun and the moon, right? Because every time you hear like there's a full moon, there's weird actions going around. Or we can also get it from below, which when I mean by below is underneath the earth, there's ley lines and electric magnetic fields. What ley lines are, are these energy lines points throughout the earth that carries a powerful electric magnetic field where these ley lines intersect that's where the energy is most potent are so if you're wondering why like people know where is a good place to live so ley lines are apparent alignments of landmarks religious sites and man-made structures that are said to carry powerful magnetic fields underneath the earth yeah, i actually stayed doing a vegetarian diet for a little bit after the vegan diet just because i felt so great I did a video on that below in the uh, in the bio, but make sure you check it out so you can kind of understand what it feels like to go on a vegan vegetarian diet. And so being clear, something told me to go to crystals, look into crystals, check it out. And then working with the crystals, I learned about crystal energies and then it led me to learning the chakras. Chakras are energy vacuums up and down our body. They're invisible, but we can detect it using a pendulum or a pointy crystal. And so when I put my hand over each chakra, you can see it rotating. This is my sacral chakra, and it's rotating clockwise. Now I move it up to my solar plexus, it's moving counterclockwise. And as you can see in a little bit, I'm going to move it to my heart chakra, and it ends up turning clockwise again. So what does it tell us? That we have invisible vacuums up and down our body flowing the energy. And also remember that each chakra regulates an area in our life. And when we start moving up to the higher chakras, such as the heart and up, our third eye actually regulates our sixth sense, our intuition, our guidance. Our crown chakra actually deals with like connection with the divine. So it's really important that we get our, the flow of our chakras up and going and flowing the right way so that we can hear these messages. And by eating the right food, 
we can help hear the messages and be a clear channel to receive the messages. Let's take a look at our third eye chakra. Here are the certain foods that can help activate each chakra. And so if you see a third eye, you see fermented products and wine. So have you ever wondered why whenever you're drunk, the truth tends to come out? Or let's look at the crown chakra, fasting. Have you ever wondered why people fast and then wanting to go to the desert? I mean, the desert is probably the best place to get like direct energy from the sun. Chakras are energy vacuums that's constantly sending and receiving information. That's right. right. Now I'm learning how to direct those energies with crystals. And because even how I got into crystals, my body was a clear channel to receive the messages to go to crystals. And not only that, I learned that if our thoughts and prayers and intentions are energies, we can direct those with our thoughts. Fun fact, did you know researchers recently found layers of quartz crystals in the stones used to build the pyramids? What is the most advanced civilization in the world for their time doing with crystals? Three important things to keep in mind. Our thoughts, prayers, and intentions are all energies that we can direct through focus. Two, we can direct those energies with the help of crystals and stones depending on their shapes and sizes. And three, we know important religious sites and man-made structures and, and like large landmarks are built over potent electric magnetic fields. If we know our prayers are focused thoughts and creating energy, and energy can be carried through crystals, why are there large crystal glasses at large churches? Now, if we know churches and religious sites are built over potent ley lines, why are they the shape that they are? We know that different stones and crystals can hold energy. Why do people use prayer beads? And if we know that our prayers can affect our physical surrounding and the water molecules, why do we pray before our meals? And we know that eating plants, that they carry a 432 hertz frequency of the sun and the frequency of the universe, could that be why a lot of monks and nuns go on a vegetarian diet? Or did you also know that the um sound of monks vibrates at 432 hertz, the same frequency as the universe? And we know that we can also use different types of sounds to release negative energies or different blocks within our chakra system, as well as cleansing the energy of these different crystals. Have you wondered why the monks are always chanting at a certain frequency and then also using Tibetan bowls or gongs and chimes to balance out their chakras? Or even consider something close by. Why do we have wind chimes? Why do royalty put crystals on their crown where their third eye and their crown chakras are? Or even when we're using holy water, when we're doing a cross on our body, why are we putting holy water on our third eye chakra and our heart chakra? And by putting certain stones and crystals in certain formations, we know that we can generate and charge the different crystals. Now, a famous landmark is the Stonehenge. Why do you think the formation of the Stonehenge the way it is? Did you know the pyramids are built over the most potent electric magnetic fields in the world? And what is this most advanced civilization for their time doing with using crystals? And we know that the stones in these pyramids has quartz in them. And so why this advanced civilization using crystals for protection on their amulets and on their body and even in their tombs? This is going to make you wonder about a lot of things that's been told to us. And so that, my friend, is a start. For you.